Are microscopic plastics already sitting in the very fluids that shape your fertility and future family? New evidence says yes, and it raises urgent questions about what you breathe, drink, wear, and cook with each day. Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining what researchers are actually finding inside human reproductive fluids and what you can do to limit exposure. I'm Alara Sky. We'll keep this direct and practical. You'll hear how often microplastics are showing up in semen and follicular fluid, why even a few particles matter, what early research is testing to help you clear them, and five steps you can start now to reduce your daily intake. Scientists analyzed follicular fluid from women undergoing egg retrieval and semen from men in fertility evaluations, using glass-only collection and careful processing to avoid contamination. The goal was simple, identify and count actual plastic particles. The results confirm that these materials pass natural barriers and reach intimate biological spaces. In that study, 69% of follicular fluid samples and 55% of semen samples contained measurable microplastics. That means more than half of those tested had plastic particles in fluids that directly influence egg maturation, sperm function, and fertilization. Follicular fluid showed higher concentrations indicating a particularly vulnerable environment. Nine types of microplastics were identified, including materials used in clothing fibers, furniture foams, packaging, non-stick cookware, beverage bottles, pipes, and 3D printed items. Most samples contained one or two particles, with some up to five. The counts may sound small, but presence alone is significant because these particles can carry additives and trigger immune responses. You encounter these materials by air, water, food, and some skin contact. Fibers and dust are inhaled, fragments are ingested with food and beverages, and contact occurs through everyday products. Once absorbed through your lungs or gut, particles enter your bloodstream and distribute to tissues. The ovaries' follicular environment and the testes receive ample blood flow, creating pathways for accumulation. Chemical additives used to make plastics flexible or stable can act as endocrine disruptors. In reproductive contexts, hormone balance is essential for ovulation, sperm production, fertilization, and implantation. Even low-level exposures may interfere with these tightly regulated processes and contribute to inflammation in sensitive tissues. Researchers are calling for larger, longer studies to define health impacts. Priorities include tracking whether particle presence affects egg or sperm quality, fertilization rates, and pregnancy outcomes. Teams also plan to map lifestyle factors, diet, workplace exposure, clothing choices, that might correlate with higher particle counts. Parallel to exposure research, scientists are exploring ways to trap or escort microplastics out of your body. This work is early, and in some cases based on lab or animal data but it offers a framework for future interventions while you focus on reducing intake from daily sources. Cross-linked cilium is one candidate. In 2024, testing outside the human body, an acrylamide cross-linked form removed over 92% of common plastics, polystyrene, PVC, and PET from water. Because it swells and forms a sticky gel, researchers are evaluating whether a similar mechanism could trap particles in your gut before they're absorbed. Chitosan, a fiber derived from shellfish, has shown elimination benefits in animals. Rats given a chitosan-enriched diet excreted a greater proportion of ingested polyethylene microplastics than controls. Chitosan and psyllium bind through hydrophobic and electrostatic forces, but they can also bind nutrients, so timing would matter. People with shellfish allergies should avoid chitosan. Probiotics are another avenue. Two strains. Lacticocybacillus paracassi, DT66 and Lactiplantabacillus plantarum, DT88, found tiny polystyrene particles in lab and animal research, forming biofilms that make particles easier to carry out with stool. Combining targeted fibers with specific probiotics is being studied as a complementary strategy. Your liver also participates in clearance, 
Specialized immune cells there can trap foreign particles and root them into bile for elimination. Compounds such as orosodeoxycholic acid and toroorosodeoxycholic acid are being investigated for supporting bile flow and particle movement. Researchers are likewise exploring autophagy support, including spermidine and rapamycin, for cellular cleanup tied to microplastic-induced stress in preclinical models. These strategies are not finished answers. They are developing lines of research. The most reliable action today is to reduce incoming particles. That begins with your air, water, fabrics, food containers, cleaning habits, and kitchen tools, the sources you touch every hour. Start with filtration. Use a HEPA purifier rated for fine particles like PM2.5 in your bedroom and living spaces. For water you drink and cook with, choose filtration that captures particles down to the micron level. These two upgrades lower what reaches your lungs and gut every day. Shift your textiles. Synthetic fabrics like polyester, nylon, and acrylic release fibers you can inhale. Choose natural fibers, organic cotton, wool, linen, or hemp for clothing, bedding, and towels. For synthetic items you own, wash less often, line dry, and use a microfiber catching laundry bag to reduce shedding into your home and local waterways. For children, natural fibers are especially helpful. Stop heating and storing food in plastic. Microwaving in plastic containers or pouring hot liquids into plastic lined cups increases particle release. Reheat and store food in glass or stainless steel, so you're not adding plastic during cooking and storage. Clean in a way that captures particles. Use a sealed vacuum with a HEPA filter and vacuum carpets, rugs, and pet areas regularly. When dusting, use a damp microfiber cloth so particles stick to the cloth instead of recirculating into the air you breathe. Reevaluate kitchen surfaces and tools. Plastic cutting boards shed directly into food with each knife stroke. Replace them with wood or glass. Swap plastic cooking utensils for stainless steel or wood. These are small changes that lower the steady trickle of plastic fragments in meals. Here's your challenge. Choose one air, water, fabric, food, cleaning, or kitchen swap and implement it in the next 24 hours. Then list two more changes to complete this week such as switching your lunch containers to glass and replacing a plastic cutting board. Each step reduces daily intake and supports your reproductive health. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.